Okay, so uh, um, we're gonna get started. Thank you for everybody who's here that kind of made it right on time. Um, I'm wondering if we should uh, uh, thank you, Sue and Scott and Grant and Greg and Kevin, all you folks, and there's a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of other people here. And we're really gonna wait uh, um, just one more minute for those latecomers who are gonna join us because uh, they were busy or they were just making coffee. So it's just gonna be one more minute. Uh, um, joining me today is, uh, as you'll see at the end of the slide, uh, Eagle Point's uh, uh, grant grandmaster, uh, um, the sensei of federal funding, the one and only Iran Harpaz, who is the head of our professional department. And the reason we started this webinars is we didn't want to go through kind of specific industries that not, might not be relevant for others. What we wanted to do is take the vertical look and go through agencies kind of uh, in a way that it's fitting to a lot of agencies. And the main point is, uh, usually when we speak about the Air Force, people can conceptualize a lot of industries and a lot of concepts, but what I've noticed, and maybe Iran can think differently, but when you speak with people about the Navy, they, it, they tend to think like you need to be a cousin of Aquaman to be able to work with them. And what we're trying to do in this webinar is show you the kind of the entire scope of uh, possible opportunities and ways to operate within the Navy. And you don't have to be a naval manufacturer. You don't have to be kind of a marine company to be able to work with the Navy. And me and Aram will try to show that to you today with opportunities that are uh, near future and more long term. And uh, the one thing I always say, again, if you can't see opportunities that have your name on it, that's fine. Reach out to me. I'll be available at yoav at eaglepointfunding.com. Email me right after the webinar. Or, or try to book a call right after, we're gonna leave the details. But the point is, do not exclude yourself from the Department of Defense as a whole, and most, uh, more specifically from the Navy without taking a very serious look at what's available for you out there. You don't have to use us, but we'd be more than happy to help. So uh, uh, without further ado, let's just kind of get right to it. We're, what we're gonna do is two basic things. One, just gonna go over grants, uh, uh, Federal Grants 101, uh, Ron is here, and if uh, like uh, um, he's going to here to be fact checking me, and if there's anything he wants to add as well, then uh, um, he's going to jump in and, and kind of put his remarks and his experience. Obviously, uh, um, he will be available for the Q and A, but mostly we're, he's here for the insights about the Navy programs. So after that, we're going to introduce uh, kind of three, four functions of the Navy on how they're looking to do faster procurement and not ten years before they they get new equipment. So um, Let's get to it. And I'm gonna repeat this a lot and I'm gonna say this again and again. You cannot exclude yourself from federal R&D funding process without taking a serious look at it. Last year, fiscal year R&D budget was 150 billion. It increased by 10 billion for 2016. And during COVID, that budget hasn't decreased. It actually increased for more uh, solutions out there. 30 to $60 billion are available for the private industry so you need to be the one who has the burden of proof of saying why you don't want to be involved in a process that the market is so large. Let's take a look at trying a little bit to compare between the private market and the R&D public sector. Uh, you can take a look at between dilutive and non-dilutive funding. And when you work with the private sector, you'll be transferring capital for equity. Um, with the pro uh, public sector, you'll be trading kind of uh, um, documents for, for capital. And in the sense that you won't have to transfer equity, uh, um, you won't have to bring in board members, you won't have to have IP transfer uh, unless it's very, very specific uh, agencies and opportunities that is kind of uh, it's mentioned very clearly. Now, let's take even a deeper look uh, and kind of more, more, more relevant to the COVID areas. We've had hesitant uh, um, investors, we've had investors that uh, basically within the diluting function, uh, you, people want to factor in their risk there are lower projected revenues, and you reduced your R&D team during COVID. I hope you're okay, but these are things that happen to a lot of companies. Companies of ours that won federal funding were able to improve negotiations. They were able to increase the value per share without dilution. They were able to have higher discounted cash flows and keeping or increasing their R&D staff, which means that they could then come to investors if needed and then get either more funding for the same equity or uh, get the same amount of funding they needed for less equity, which are all things on the valuation of the company, which kind of like the finance 101 type of benefits there. And the, the, the one thing in the, is again, if you take a look at the amount of agencies that are available, 
across different industries. So it's not just the Department of Defense, then there's the NIST, the NASA, and the Natural Science Foundation, and Homeland Security, and, and Department of Energy and Transportation. These are all agencies that we work with and we apply with on a regular basis. And again, if you just take a look at the type of companies, you cannot truly, you cannot exclude yourself from this process without taking a serious look there and not just brush off by an advice of a friend of an uncle of a cousin that told you that uh, it's difficult, so it's not worth the uh, like possible millions of dollars of contracts. Let's go into the two types of federal investments, the way we look at it at Eagle Point. It's either an agency that's looking for solutions to problems that they have or seed money that's looking to push the envelope. Uh, um, in the first scenario, you might have an agency that has uh, specific problems. They'd be posting opportunities for solutions, learn what the market can bring out out there, and that might be RFIs, requests for information, or RFPs, requests for proposals. They'll invest in the companies that give the best pitch and make the most sense, and then they'll see how those companies actually perform on R&D, and if they're able to deliver, they'll become an early adopter or customer and might not necessarily be an early adopter, but become one of the largest clients that there are. A great example from it that we know actually comes from the Air Force, that the Air Force was trying to develop their own helmet. And it took them seven years and $7 million to develop it. By the time they finished, the product was no longer relevant. It was outdated. And then they posted it out to the private sector. I think they were able, um, and Aram will correct me if I got this wrong, but I think they were able to get two or three prototypes they were cutting edge at about, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, at least half of the price in about a third of the time. So they understand that there's a lot of value that can come in from engaging the private sector uh, at various levels. It can either be frontline stuff or these can be stuff to improve logistics and we'll get into it. The other type of uh, kind of federal funding investment is funding innovation and small business companies, specifically within uh, um, uh, SBIR, Small Business Innovation Research. And uh, if, if you ever get a chance to speak with me or we'll ever have a, uh, ever have a talk with Iran, the question we're going to ask you sometimes is the same question that the National Science Foundation asks, and that is, what's next? What are you doing now and why should we care about it in kind of a, a, um, a very broad, kind of very <clears throat> honest terms? And then if you get the initial 250000 or then a prototyping contract for a million dollars, what are you going to do with it? How is this? the next innovative part? Does that increase scale? Does that just uh, um, increase the quality? How the funding that you'll receive benefit and, and kind of become the next big innovation there? And that's what the NSF, for instance, is all about. Uh, if you take a look at the NSF, they're either doing it from improving quality of lives, but also you can get an ROI of up to $2.30 on the dollar and what you're getting there. Another Milken Institute research showed that you can leverage that up to eight times on the dollar between public and private, which means come, comes back again to the same point. It's a very strong negotiating move. If you already have another investor, it means you've been vetted and there's less due diligence to be made. Now, let's take a look at some pie charts because you can't do a webinar without them. But in SBIR, Small Business Innovation Research, they're only 3.2% of the entire budget. They're low, lower hanging fruit and they're significantly more convenient for startups. Uh, you as a startup, uh, anyone who's listening right now, uh, you can't afford to wait five years before you get a contract that's a uh, hundred million dollars long. Startups need smaller amounts of funding at a faster pace that uh, might be just a little bit more phased. And the reason I'm saying that is because uh, SBIRs have tried to become significantly more convenient for startups and that is understood as a piece of innovation with at least within uh, American economy. So a phase one can be uh, on average 150,000, uh, Department of Defense do 100 to 150, National Science Foundation do up to 256, and these are proof of concept stage. Uh, different agencies describe it in different ways, but the point is, does the idea make sense? Is there a technical merit? Is there a logical scientific basis to actually think that what you're saying you're going to do will actually happen? Or do a small experiment to show that what you think you will do can actually happen. The next step is a prototype phase can be up to a million, a million and a half dollars, anywhere from 12 to 27 months. Obviously, software kind of are able to reach prototyping faster than hardware, but still, these are opportunities that are available there. And then commercialization assistance. We've had clients that went through a phase one and phase two, and then in March, when the market was crashing 20%, they got $3 million matching funding from the Air Force, which means they got $3 million from the agency, they had to come up with an additional three. So 
uh, it's not just a very good financing move. It's not just a way to scale your R&D efforts. As crisis was happening, it's also a very strong business move. It's not a traditional one. It's not a traditional salesperson trying to make a sales pitch, but it's still a very strong business move if you think at it at a scope of six months to a year. Um, let's move on to kind of what did you see announcements a little bit. Um, continuous founding instead of kind of very structured can be anywhere from two to five years, high words uh, within Eagle Point and the Fremont family. We've helped companies get up to $65 million in broad agency announcements. Uh, broad agency announcement of which is exactly means broad. We're going to talk about it specifically for the Navy, but it's not a specific solution with detailed of, of, the, uh, uh, of the specs that they're looking for. These might be open solutions that, that fit the bill and, and it's up to you to kind of uh, explain more about it. Iran, go ahead. You can. You're yeah, ready. thank you. Just just wanted to hi everyone. This I'm Iran Azeyo. I've said a very small correction. Uh, broad industry announcements in some cases are very specific, but as you have said, they're broad in the in the way that uh, they either encompass many many potential users within the agency itself, or they cover. Um, a, a broad um, um, variation of topics that are of interest for the agency. So you have, as, as in everything, you have different types of agency, a broad agency announcement, and you have different types of opportunities, applications, SBIRs, you know, it, it comes in all, they come in all sizes and shapes. So it's just a very, very small, maybe also not important correction, but just something to understand. So, you know, there are those who are very specific and those who are very broad. So sorry for okay. that. Uh, th uh, thank you. I uh, uh, truly appreciate it. Uh, let's go a little bit to what you can factor in the, the federal funding budget. Now, this is obviously very general, but these are kind of uh, lines that we're seeing consistently as of the work that we do with clients. You can factor in salaries of R&D staff, you can subcontractors, instruments, materials, and factor up to 7% profit. I've spoken with companies in the past that said that they factor up to 13, 14% profit. Uh, um, we like to keep it as what we know is kind of the, the, the legal part. So out of a million dollar contract, you'll be able to take 70,000 as profit. But I think the really interesting parts are you can factor in salaries of the R&D staff. So if you're a CTO listening to this or a CEO or a CFO and you're thinking, wait, if I take on a federal funding budget, I'm already going to be spreading my uh, uh, engineering team very thin. But actually, uh, and around correct me if I'm wrong, we've had situations where we factored salaries of engineers and R&D staff that was up to $200 an hour. So you can bring in additional team members if you need to for that project. Yeah, it's possible. And it's possible, it, it, again, depends on the agency. In some cases, for example, the NSF doesn't really like to have too high of a salary, but for we had cases in the, in the Air Force and the Army where we put in a, a salary that, that could be up to $150 per hour without the fringe benefits, um, and, and it was approved. So a case by case, but you're correct. Possibly, there is a possibility for them to fund very high, um, very high um, uh, salaries. Okay, awesome. Um, that's it. If you have more specific questions or, or you'd like uh, um, us to have a more in-context and specific discussion with you, um, we're going to move to the next bit but feel free to email me at yoav, Y-O-A-V, at eaglepointfunding.com, and let's kind of book a call and schedule there. Also, if you have questions, feel free. Uh, um, yeah, exactly. Uh, Iran, thank you. So I'll put questions in the Q&A. We'll address them at, uh, at each point. Let's move into the Department of Navy. Um, here's our logo. Essentially, let's go and first start with the SBIR topics. Right now, the peace solicitation is open. We now know what are some of the solutions and, and problems that the Navy is looking for. The pre solicitation was open on August 25th. The submission starts on September 22nd. It closes on October 22nd. And our internal deadline is September 20th. And uh, um, I'm gonna, like, we know we're very strict about our, our kind of deadlines within Eagle Point, uh, um, Iran, uh, because you're the enforcer of the deadline, uh, uh, why do we put that deadline and why does it make sense to start so long ahead before the deadline? So basically there are a, a number of, of reasons for that. The first thing, um, you always have technical issues on the deadline. Uh, we had cases for companies 
uh, we worked on a big application for them for uh, rather big you know a phase two uh, with with the with, where they had a memorandum signed by the by the government or by by the Air Force and because we had to wait for the last minute the system crashed and the system systems always crash so so um, it's very important for us to be able to, to to have the submissions as early as possible so that we avoid crashing and problems with the system uh, next there are, the, there are agencies who clearly say that they don't like, they don't like late bloomers and late submissions. Um, so, 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 so that's, sorry. Sorry. So that's also an, an issue for us. Um, and, and, and the last thing I think, the more time we have, the better, the better application we have, because we have more time to, to review and to, and to, and to um, adjust and correct the application. So, so that's, so that's basically why. Okay, uh, um, awesome. W within kind of the first submission or, or what would you usually expect to get done within that month of, of a first submission and preparation and why does it take so long? So um, during the first month we're taking care of registration. The companies have uh, a lot or, or a, a lot, um, many different systems and many different uh, portals that they need to, sub to register. It could be anything from sbr.gov, uh, the Army's uh, um, SBR portal, sam.gov, research.gov, login.gov, all the .govs and .mil and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and in some cases, it takes, it takes about an hour or five minutes to log in. And in some cases, for example, with sam.gov, in order for the company to, re to receive something called the cage code, which is pretty much um, um, a, the, a number or a code that shows that they're legitimate to work with the government, it takes them three weeks and sometimes even more than that to, to finalize the registration and provide the company with a cage code. And there are many cases where you have to have an active SAM account or a cage code in order to submit an application. So that's the first thing where we what were that the first reason we usually the first thing that we usually take care of during the first first month. The the second reason for for, for um, why it takes us time or what's happening in the first month, we we learn and we study the company. We learn about the technology. We understand how how is how, what's the best way for us to co to collaborate. Do we work through emails, through Dropbox, through Google Drive, through Slack, through phone calls? Uh, it takes it. The first application usually takes us a little bit longer to process and to submit because we still don't have enough information. Uh, so the first month is to start is we're we're studying each other. We we we're finding the best way to work. The company understand how we work and what we need, uh, and that's how we move forward. That's usually what happens in the first month. Okay. Um, so again, if you have further questions, uh, um, either send them in the Q and A or. Uh, I'm available at Y-O-A-V, Yoav, at eaglepointfunding.com. It's going to be at the last slide. So let's just get right into topics. And, and, and again, if you don't see something that has your name on it, that's fine. There's additional more opportunities that are available. We're going to go after it and uh, um, uh, essentially talk to us later if you need more information. Advanced radio frequency, uh, RF and photonic integrated circuit. And this is me actually reading from the the... The opportunity itself, they're looking for to develop photonic integrated circuits that have high dynamic range, large instantaneous operational bandwidth, which digital signal processing at native radio frequency or intermediate frequency uh, um, that are expected to operate from L to KA bands, uh, wider upper frequency range is also desired. And then they really put in the opportunity uh, um, out there in their phase one, in the solicitation itself. They're looking to explore a variety of fabrication materials and investigate their performance in regard to bandwidth and dynamic range. As some materials are used, uh, some are considered rare materials, investigate uh, um, ease of acquiring and manufacturing of materials explored. Notice that A, there's no specific specs here. Uh, um, usually usually they uh, put uh, um, usually they put up uh, uh, an amount of funding that is available uh, around you know maybe possibly why they didn't put out how much funding is available right now they did actually I mean, I mean, uh, maybe I should have told you that um, so basically <laughs> for the for uh, the, the in the SBIRs they don't put the, the usually unless it's a special topic for example with the DLA sometimes we do that but with, with the Navy there is one one uh, funding available for for all the topics. We're talking about um, one hundred fifty thousand dollars for a base duration of six months, and then another for another 
um, uh, one hundred dollars for for the next uh, for the next uh, um, six months. So we're talking about a total of maximum two hundred fifty thousand dollars for a duration of twelve months, where the first duration is a base period, and then the second duration, which is an option, is supposed to be the activities and the development or performance, anything that needs to be performed in order to uh, improve the company's ability to get to the phase two, which is um, Fred, right now it's not published how much, um, how much money is going to be available for phase two. Usually in, in the Navy, it's in the vicinity of about $1.1 million for a phase two. Awesome. Uh, let's take a look at the phase two. Uh, I don't know if you remember, that's the prototyping stage. They're looking to develop a set of performance specifications for the advanced RF and, and conductive system requirements, and then establish a working relationship with a candidate, a modem contractor to perform initial integration activities and identification, uh, identification and development. The, the, the third part after that, uh, they're looking to develop the prototype advanced uh, RF, and then at the bottom part, phase three dual use application. And they define uh, and they ask you to refine and fully develop the phase three MD to produce production of representative article of the advanced RF and integrate into the final target. What, what I'm trying to show here is not my great voice and reading off Navy proposals. It's the fact that within that step, there are the next step built into it. So it's not just, oh, I'm going to do a project that's a uh, hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth, which uh, is nice, but it's not the most exciting amounts. What you can see here is how the phase one leads to a prototype and then possibly if you're able to deliver and get selected and that's where we, we want to help at those stages it could lead to you being able to provide to the navy at tracks that might be significantly faster if you went to a regular bid that could have taken five years before you got integrated so um if you're considering oh it's just an r d move that's a distraction no it's it's also a business development move that leads to a procurement or having as a client uh, um, Iran, if you have anything to add or you want me to move to the next slide? Uh, no, no, you can move. Uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, machine learning detection for source code uh, vulnerability. Again, the, uh, the objective of development demonstrates software capability, utilize ML techniques to scan source code for its dependencies, trains catalogs, algorithm co-dependencies. A phase one uh, proof of concept stage develop a concept for design software and utilities that perform uh, text mining, uh, et cetera, et cetera, trains algorithm to catalog uh, multiple vul uh, vulnerability on databases. Then they move on into, uh, um, that was kind of a phase one. Then they, again, have a phase two, develop, demonstrate, validate the mature phase one, develop concepts into prototype software, work with the government to establish metrics and accept and testing for bullets listed in phase one and again dual three applications so it's not within kind of only hardware uh, hardware and kind of circuits it's also in ml with specific use cases um uh, iran I, I usually speak with uh, uh ai ml companies and and usually i tell them that uh, it's more it's harder to actually understand what is important for them because of the broad applications of ml do you guys experience on your side on deciding what to do with your AI companies or usually it gets really easy on finding the projects for them? So there, in this case, for example, so when, when, when a company says that they're doing machine learning, usually what we, what we try to understand is what they're doing with the machine learning because you have companies or, you know, you, 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 can't, you can't have someone who's developing the core algorithm of, of, of the AI or the machine learning and, 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 and but usually companies try to make money. So they're, tr they're looking for the use case and, and the applicability of the system. And that's this, and it's the same thing about the, about the Navy in this case. So what we, what we see here, they're looking for machine learning detection of source code vulner vulnerabilities. So you have companies who, who are doing specifically that. Um, so so us with AIs, it's all, always, what you want to do or what's the what's the end use or what's the what's the the end goal of the, of the ai and how you use that um i don't know if i answered the clear question if, if not then you can you know we can try again no it's uh it's fine uh let's move into the next topic uh, um <clears throat> frequency hopping optimization for tactical data links uh, develop utilize a modern receiver digital Compensations algorithm to increase tactical network. Phase one, demonstrate the feasibility of new existing partial overlapping channel techniques 
And then phase two is uh, prototype and demonstrate uh, our partial overlapping channel solutions, encompassing both the design of the algorithms and anticipated effects. And again, we have here uh, phase three. Obviously, the solicitations are much longer and each opportunity like that, uh, this is just a very short description of it. But what, what you see is uh, some of it is either kind of very, very specific. Some of them do have specs, past opportunities I've seen, they're actually looking for specific um, specs and broadband. But each case is, uh, you need to go deeper and read between the lines. Uh, either way though, there's a very huge variety of solutions that, that need to be met, both in hardware and in software. Uh, um, I, want to I, will add, go ahead. I will add more. Uh, right now we're in the pre-solicitation, for example, for the SBIR, we're in the, in the pre-solicitation uh, phase. This is the time to ask questions. Every topic, every, for every topic, for every, um, um, every agency or every office in the DOD, there are specific, um, specific um, TPOCs or topic, topic point of contacts where we can contact them and try and ask them questions, either through email or phone or through their website um, um, of the DOD portal. And we can ask them questions and understand exactly uh, what we do, if what we're doing is in the focus area of this of the system, and so on. So, you can whenever there is doubt, you can try and contact them. Usually, they answer the questions for, at least for the SBIR. Uh, and so long as you're asking the questions in during the pre-solicitation and pre-publication top um, uh, period. Once we pass this pre-solicitation, which is after September 23rd, we can no longer ask them questions or rather we can, but they're not obligated to answer, our, to answer our questions. So whenever there is a question, what, what do they mean? Are, is what we're doing in the scope of the, of the topic? This is the time to ask them. Awesome. Uh, um, how often, Iran, how often do you find yourselves approaching uh, um, program officers before submission? For SBIR is not as much because usually it's clear uh, what they want, the topics themselves are very clear as, as to what they want. If you read the, the actual uh, topic and actual solicitation, as you said, there's a lot of information for every one of, for each one of them. In, in BAAs, in, the one, in, the, in, in what you're going to talk about next, um, this is, we consider it as mandatory to at least try and contact the TPOC. So, depends, but in BAAs always, in, in, in SBIRs, usually we don't, we don't see a need to ask, to ask them. Okay. Uh, let's get on with broad agency announcements. And th this is uh, N triple uh, triple O one four uh, whatever. The, the the point is, this is just one of the broad agency announcements that are open. Um, this one, uh, this one has a very close deadline, uh, but there's a huge variety. Obviously, the you've seen in the pie chart, there's significantly more uh, broad agency announcement funding than there is in SBIRs, but. I still wanted to bring it out to show you how kind of uh, wide and just go over uh, some of the topics there. Um, uh, yes, so let's get to it. Uh, Office of Naval Research, uh, ONR Global and the Marine Corps were interested in receiving proposals for long-range science and technology projects which offer potential for investment and improvement of Navy and Marine Corps operations. And these are not just frontline activities. These can be logistics, task office, cybersecurity, uh, um, uh, I've seen an opportunity that came, if I'm not mistaken, from the DLA in the last proposal that was looking for automated dining room solutions uh, um, within DOD facilities. So they were looking for automated machines to improve that part. So it doesn't have to be frontline stuff. It's not means that it's going to be mounted on the weapon. Huge, huge, huge variety of topics and applications. And the OSR actually has in their website uh, a technology area from A to Z. I looked at it there. Uh, I think there's at least a hundred technology areas that they're interested in finding solutions onto. Uh, um, by the way, if you want and you need this intra, um, intra, intra, interested in this deck, um, shoot us an email at yoav at eaglepointfunding.com and uh, we'll send that to you uh, so you can circulate around. Let's take a look at just a handful of the available topics. So obviously we can't go over, over all of them. We can see in logistics, cyberspace, uh, simulation and training, uh, big data and AI. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me for my sarcasm. There's a lot of AI companies and uh, um, we're always kind of looking in, uh, for applications. Let's just take a short look at logistics. Um, what they're looking for 
as a broad topic and their objective, they're looking for reduced consumption of energy, demand and uh, resupply, visibility and efficiency, autonomous unmanned support and, uh, uh, and resupply capabilities. They're looking for uh, secure resupply in urban environments. They're looking for uh, operations from a sea-based uh, compromise of either US Navy, amphibious, amphibious shipping or uh, alternate platforms. They're looking new and efficient additive manufacturing technologies for metals. So um, Iran, this is, and this is me reading from kind of the very basic objective there, but Iran, uh, um, like the broadness of the topic, does that mean that they don't know what they're looking for? Does that mean that they're open for a variety of solution? How do we tackle kind of the broadness of uh, topics as a whole and in broad agency announcements? So, so yeah, so if you have a topic that is very vague, or um, it usually means that they're not really knowing, they don't really know what they're looking for. Um, yeah, basically, yes. I mean, when you have, when you, the ONR, uh, very, the, this one, this, this solicitation we're looking at now, very similar to the ARL application with the Army and uh, with uh, another one with the AFOSR, which is the Air Force. These are the main BAAs, the long range BAAs from the, from the, from the office that they were published by. So they cover, we've, I said before, they covered many, many uh, end users and potential customers within the Air Force, the, the Navy in this case. So that's why you see hundreds of topics and campaigns and, and, and opportunities for every companies of every sort. Um, so in a way, there, there, and there, are, there are topics where they just say, I have something that I need, but I don't know what's available. Uh, and that's where you see that they just describe their need and don't give you any point as to the solution and what they want to, to get from this, the, the, the solution that is going to be provided. And in other cases, they're very specific. We want, for example, you mentioned the, the dining room uh, robot, which, which by the way, we submitted an application for that topic. Um, so uh, so you're, they can say, I want a robot that will be able to provide um, food, um, you know, meals, hot meals for 200 people, uh, 200 troops, an hour at uh, these temperatures with these specific uh, sizes um, work in these conditions. So the more specific they, they are in the topic itself, you know that it's a more, a more concrete need that was raised by someone within, for example, the Navy or the DLA or whatever, or whatever agency or office that we're talking about. So the, the, the more specific, the more specific it is. The more information you have, you know that it's an actual need that was raised. If not, it's some, some it's just that sometimes it's just them trying to understand what's available in the market for, for their needs. Awesome. Uh, let's move into cyberspace. Uh, they're looking for uh, technologies to defend networks and evade react to attacks. They're looking for uh, create, maintain, provide cyberspace situational awareness. They're looking for capabilities to enable reconnaissance of network activities, enabling operations in support of information warfare and electronic warfare, um, uh, create meaningful, accurate, and specific uh, coordinate of adversarial effects, uh, prevent intrusion, compromise, or data uh, um, exfiltration of our own information, uh, uh, reconstitute compromised information uh, systems to usable, trustworthy state of minimum downtime. They're looking for live, virtual, and constructive uh, uh, cyber training. They're looking for cyber hardening and security include handheld devices and unmanned systems. Uh, again, very broad topic. They're uh, basically looking for uh, a variety of solutions to be incorporated. I've seen also within the last SBIR topic and what was available in the news that the Navy is now experimenting and moving into a digital twin that they're gonna have, the, they wanna incorporate it within the entire scale of the Navy. Uh, let's move to simulation and training. And, and again, this is really a handful of available topics that were there. The whole point is to show you that A, none of the topics that we showed you were any marine time. You didn't have to, like, uh, uh, I don't know, bring the scales of, of, uh, of Aquaman or the Trident or, or things like that. That is just about the, the rotor. Uh, these are things that are available across industries with applications that are usable for the Navy. And that's always where I come at it, saying, do not exclude yourself from the process without taking a careful look at it. Uh, let's move to simulation and training. Uh, they're looking for simulation training of humor, uh, human performance, adaptable and deployable training systems and technologies that enhance the speed and effectiveness of training. Uh, integration of live virtual simulated training 
through network uh, uh, businesses, simulation systems that immerse individuals operationally, realistic training scenarios, technologies that link actors at the tactical and operational levels. Uh, um, uh, around coming back to the funding question again, within broad agency announcements, uh, um, what are expectations or how do you guys set on writing the budget within there when it comes to funding? Because SBIR is somewhat very structured, broad agency announcement is fuzzier. So that's where it's that's where it gets super important to, to have a chat with the TPOC or to at least send them an email asking them about that. Um, usually where we go when we go for 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 uh, for these types of opportunities unless otherwise mentioned we're trying to be less than one million dollars per year of the project itself just because we want to make sure that uh, we want over budget um, and, and, and be uh, still have the chance of being awarded and, and funded um, but we always ask and always try to contact the TPOC for example for the ONR this is an opportunity that is um, currently approaching its end of the life, its end of end of life. So you know, as as you have said, uh, thir September thirtieth is the deadline for that. Um, and and there are campaigns there that were out, but the budget has ended, or or they finished all of the budget. So it's important to ask them and understand what's the what's their expectations, what how much money they're expecting to pro to provide to each budget, to each to each project. What's what's their total budget? How many projects they're expecting to 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 budget and, and approve? So usually we're trying to be at, at under one million dollars per year, uh, but it but it changes depending on on the input from the from the um, from the TPOC. Okay, awesome. The, thanks, Aaron. Um, if you have specific questions about kind of topics that are relevant to you. Um, if we can't answer at the moment, please email me at yoav, Y-O-A-V, at eaglepointfunding.com, and we'd be more than happy to kind of personally review it. We just uh, got to get to it. Uh, let's take a look at big data and AI, because why not? Um, they're looking for a whole kind of wide variety of topics, from electronic warfare to decision making. Uh, they're looking for uh, information uh, operations, technologies enabling information related capabilities that uh, create, maintain, and provide situational, uh, situational awareness. This was just a small part uh, that I took from one of the available opportunities. But again, uh, the, the question shouldn't be, is there something that's relevant for me? Is, is uh, where can I find it? Uh, it's, not, it's not if, it's how it's relevant and how we're gonna pitch it. Um, if there's no broad agency announcements, uh, questions, then uh, we'd love to move to kind of the next program. Okay, let's move into the Naval X. Naval X is a bit fuzzier when it comes to the, the uh, amount of funding and kind of program itself, but <clears throat> um, what they're saying about themselves is they describe themselves as an agile, uh, collaborative, and connected naval network that creates organizational agility by empowering the workforce to solve problems and help to build partnerships and networks to enable greater collaboration on warfighter uh, on needs. And uh, this, uh, Ron, if you could talk uh, soon uh, in a second about kind of in cycle and out of cycle, at least my experience was we're constantly seeing new programs coming up that are promising. Uh, faster funding, more direct, and leads to uh, more direct procurement contracts instead of long, heavy bureaucratic processes. Uh, um, but we're seeing these kind of type of agencies that says we move fast, we're interested in tech, uh, um, talk to us. Yeah, and, and an interesting thing is every agency, every office is taking a slightly different approach at that. At that. So for example, the Air Force with AFWORKS had some kind of a, something they call the dual use opportunity for uh, open topic for dual use technologies and innovations. Um, the army just are about to go with Spartan, which is cohort of, of companies who try to solve a specific uh, problem um, that was identified by the air force, by the army, sorry. And the Navy is going for some, something of um, something similar to the army, which is a network uh, of, of uh, collaboration between companies and the Navy itself to solve problems. And, and they're not, as far as, uh, as far as I know, they're not going through the SBIR mechanism, but through faster mechanisms um, based on non-SBIR funding and money. So every one of them is going more, right now the, 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 the direction is going towards the open topics and the open opportunities because they understand that they don't know what they don't know. So this is Naval X and Global X, which is the next opportunity that uh, 
you always going to describe? Yes, uh, Global X Agile Innovative Research, a nine month international science challenge worth up to 750,000, seeks revolutionary research through active worldwide cooperation. The, the, usually when we speak with companies, we discuss SBIRs and are they eligible? If you want to know if you're eligible or not, feel free to contact me later and we'll go over it. We'll do kind of the help you with the pre-screening there. But this one was also available for international companies or companies that weren't fitting to the uh, traditional SBIR process. Um, here's a screenshot from their website that shows the timelines. So you can see May 2020, white paper submission, June 12th, notification, full proposal, July 13th, notification of selection uh, uh, July 31st, and then uh, grant awards within uh, slightly over a month after. These are something that for an opportunity that can be up to 750,000, that's pretty fast. And, and usually I, I speak to a lot of companies, they still imagine that if they're gonna do a process with the government or the DOD or the Navy, this is something that's gonna take five years, their grandchildren might get some of the award and maybe in like 200 years, their product is going to be integrated. No, we're seeing more and more programs that are trying to move faster. And uh, this is not the actual dates. We're hoping that they're gonna update their timeline soon. This was just an example of um, the dates and how fast they're moving. Okay, uh, Global X, uh, let's go a little bit uh, um, about the topics. Uh, they're looking for um, uh, their uh, kind of their focus areas. They're looking for modeling, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, synthetic biology, advanced uh, digital um, manufacturing, mat uh, um, materials, structural uh, mechanics. <laughs> um, they're looking for uh, multifunctional mar uh, maritime films for persistent survival platforms and war fighter. Uh, um, the, 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 I'm just scrolling briefly going through uh, um, some of their focus areas. Uh, potential uh, enabling technical disciplines, uh, synthetic biology. Again, th these are topics that are coming back within different applications. They're looking for a uh, detect and identify objects of any scale in any medium, within air, water, uh, sand, earth. Uh, um, they're looking for you to detect objects. If you have visual ML, then you can use these stuff as well. Another one, potential, uh, uh, yes. Uh, I I'm not gonna go over the entire because it's really, really long list. But uh, um, around based on your experience and what you've looked at so far, uh, um, how open is the Office of Naval Research and Global X for new opportunities, use cases? Or are they looking for something that they already have in mind within Global X? Um, what was your experience doing these things? So in, in two words, very open. I mean, they, they, they don't know what, what's available. This is an opportunity for companies to pitch their ideas and to provide them with a solution that they think can solve uh, the the need the 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 navy's need or problems, so it's 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 very open. It's it's companies from every type, any size, any any place, any with any solution can win this. So it's 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 an open topic. Everyone can win. Everyone can apply. Everyone can can try. Okay, um, that's kind of the end of the topics. But I wanted to show you, uh, um, uh, I want to show you basically that it's not just a strong investment move or, or a financing move. It's not just strong R&D play that we try to align based on what you as a company might want to do. Uh, it's also a business move. It's also a step and a foot in the door to get a contract with the government. So, so uh, we have an example of clients that after they finished their phase two, they moved into a procurement and now they're on the process of literally having uh, one of the federal agencies as as a client. Uh, let's take a look at some short case studies that we have. AppWorks is a program within uh, the Air Force. They have a phase one to phase two or direct to phase two, 50K for a phase one, or uh, uh, phase two can be 500 to a million and a half. Uh, we've done, uh, I'm not sure this is the most updated data, but we have 24 submissions, 14 phase one, two direct to phase two, uh, over 50% win, 67% won, uh, just with that agency. Uh, um, yeah, it's not updated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not okay. Uh, um, okay. Uh, so, sorry about that, but uh, essentially, uh, um, uh, Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong, but the way we play it at Eagle Point Funding is we're not asking what's going to be the one best submission. When we decide if you want to work with a client I present to you, it's essentially a question of how many opportunities can we write together, correct? Yeah, 
we're trying, first of all, we're trying to, to look, uh, we're trying to get a to get an understanding or to get a feeling as to how applicable the system is, how, or, or how wide the technology could be. Uh, we always try to take the systems to, to the, the innovation and technology to new use cases. We're not, we're not focusing on one, on one system. For example, uh, a company is working on crypto um, um, or, or, or blockchain technologies, and they're worked up until now on, on crypto, cryptocurrency or, or, or very specific use case of that, um, providing the, data, the, the blockchain for a specific kind of smart contract that was used only to prove uh, that you have an asset as part of the cryptocurrency um, uh, trade. So that company, if, if, first of all, if they're willing to, and if it's something that they want to do, we will try to broaden their use case for them. So uh, bit, um, uh, blockchain technologies and, and dis distributed ledgers and smart contracts can be used for anything from proving that you have, you know, um, 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 updating the information about the, the inventory for a company, for, of a unit in the army or in the Navy, collaboration, collaborating and, 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 transition, and transmitting information between units, um, um, providing information to, um, uh, to the um, maintenance po uh, forces and units in the army or in the navy uh, about whether or not a specific maintenance performance uh, was performed on a, on a unit. So it's very broadening. So we try to see how broad it is and how applicable we think it is mainly for the DOD because that's the biggest opportunity, but also for other agencies as for the NSF. Is there any, any, um, very, any innovation, groundbreaking innovation and fundamental innovation going forward or is all the innovation from the back and right now uh, the company is only looking at the um, commercialization of the system um, is the company how basically how as you can see here the, the, we're looking for the three criteria here and that's how we try and understand plus um, do we know or do we feel that we'll have a lot of opportunities we're talking about at least six or seven submissions per year per company that we want to get um, so assuming if this is, if the company is very, very limited in what they're doing in the scope and they don't want to broaden up their search and be a little bit more creative and more open for, for other opportunities, uh, it's a, it's a company that we're less inclined to work with. Okay. Uh, um, uh, awesome. Th thank you, Ron. Uh, let's talk about a little bit on the dark side of grants. Obviously I've been painting a very rosy picture though. Uh, um, and, and basically that might answer, okay, it's free money, it's available, it's a large contract and there's a huge opportunity, but why don't people do it? Uh, essentially, and, and, and Iran can tell you much more of it, but it's hard to find. There's low success rates for a lot of companies per submission. Uh, sometimes it's tough deadlines, especially if you don't know what you're doing. And uh, it's never a top priority because it's much easier to conceptualize a client or an investor. It's very hard to understand what it means to send an opportunity to the Navy and possibly get it uh, awarded and then selected. So, so uh, um, essentially, it's just a little bit fuzzier and it's hard to contextualize and understand why to do it. But um, that's one of the reasons why we have deadlines. That's why uh, um, we're putting a hard stops and we're trying to walk with the clients step by step. So A, it's more tangible and they can actually see the process uh, that's coming up. Uh, um, any other uh, problems with grants around you want to share or this is enough? No, as you said, I mean, um, I think this, this, uh, this slide says, uh, says it all. I mean, it's hard to, under, it's, hard, it's hard to find relevant uh, grants and it's hard to understand what they really want and how to submit. It takes a lot of time to submit. Um, you're a company whose, whose goal is to make, is to sell and to develop and to make money. So grants, a grant is all is never the top priority, and it takes time to write them. So I think I think as you as you as you wrote here, I think it, it summarizes everything very well. Thank you. Uh, um, our five keys to kind of win in federal grants, and and uh, again, I I don't want anybody on the webinar feeling like uh, we're a gatekeeper to the government or we're some sort of, of a government agency. Uh, we're not. Most of this information is public records. The the information and the insights that we're bringing is by submitting hundreds and hundreds of grants and working with dozens and dozens of companies. So over time and experience, we figured out what's significant, what works much better compared to other ways of operating. Essentially, if we want to work with, uh, if we want to work with you, we try to find with you multiple funding opportunities, 
when we know the systems is kind of read between the lines and truly understand what they're looking for, the fact that it's AI doesn't mean that it's AI for you. Build a case on why should the agency care about the tech? Why does, what does the market care about what you're doing right now? And why should the agency care? Tell your story in a way that's marketable and then engage in multi-submissions. So you're not uh, um, putting all your eggs in one submission, hoping to win and make a uh, bank. Uh, we want to try again and again and again until you succeed. And in the same way that you think of dating, fundraising, or getting clients, it's a process of finding the right clients, applying to them, and then trying again and again until you win. So uh, that's the way kind of uh, that we're looking at it. Um, any other keys to winning Iran or we can move forward? No, uh, I can move forward, I think. Um, just final, before we move to the final kind of Q&A about us, uh, we're a daughter company of the Freemind Group or a sister company, depending on how you want to look at it. Cumulatively, 20 years of experience, a uh, billion plus dollars, and then funding 500 plus active clients. Uh, we specialize in that. We're a team of 100 plus people. At Eagle Point, we've been doubling in size about every year, more than doubling in size, actually, uh, when we ran into the numbers. And what do you expect by where, uh, working with us? Uh, again, you don't have to work with us. Um, you're not obliged to. We're not. Uh, um, it's not like we're the only way with federal funding. Of course not. We're here to make this process faster, smoother, more convenient, more tangible, and better. Uh, um, correct me, Iran, correct me if I'm wrong, right? It's not like we have a secret powder that we sprinkle and then that's it, you win a grant. No, no, obviously not. I mean, obviously we're, we're not that big as that's where we can say most, most of the companies that win are working with us. Uh, maybe we will be someday, I don't know. But, but for now, obviously, most of the companies are winning either alone or winning alone. It's possible to do that. It's always nice to have someone who knows the material from inside and can help you. And, 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 and do it for you or with you uh, and, and, and is, is the process. Uh, I think that's the main thing that we can do as well as introduce you to new, to new uh, opportunities that I didn't know before or wasn't able to find. Okay, uh, um, what to expect in kind of working with us after we kind of agree on our both retainer and success fee. Uh, our, our current uh, upfront payment is $36,000 plus a 5% success fee on the grants we end up winning together. After we agree and sign the contract, obviously we sign an NDA with every single client. Uh, after we get that, we're going to have a kickoff call or at least an introduction email introducing you to the project manager. Maybe you'll be lucky enough to exchange a few words with Iran, but he's going to be very busy in the next month and a half. So, um, what we're looking for the first submission is anywhere from kind of 60 to 80 hours from your side. It's not going to be just you, but uh, this is our assessment. If we're starting things from scratch and getting all the materials together, especially if there's no experience, that's going to be kind of the time uh, expenditure and investment from your side. We hope that every following submission is going to take 10 hours or less because we get pretty close to semi-autonomous. And if this is something that is a priority and if you see it as something important, we'd be hoping to work with you on anywhere from five to 10 submission through the initial uh, nine month trial period. Uh, um, that's what to expect on working with us. Uh, as far as we're concerned about this DOD SBIR cycle, um, we have a deadline on engaging by September 20th. So if you think this is something for you and you wanna engage in, reach out to me at Yoab at Eagle Point Funding. I'll be sending a deck later and then uh, um, let's see how soon we can onboard you. Uh, um, okay, that's me. That's kind of the Cambly. Um, any final Q&A, uh, um, now would be the time to do it or send personal uh, emails and we'll both uh, answer the questions. Iran, sorry for the shitty photo. But <laughs> I, I was able to only pull up the low quality. But uh, yeah, um, I think I look better in this picture than I look in real life. It's fine. No, uh, now you have a much thicker beard. So um, yeah, I disagree. Yeah. But, uh, um, <laughs> um, the, that's it, folks. Uh, any other questions or, or um, stuff, stuff that we haven't covered, feel free to either contact me or, or uh, um, now is the time, a few minutes for Q&A before we have to go. Thank you. <laughs> uh, um, okay, uh, if that's it, uh, Wait, folks, everyone, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer about the success rate, uh, if, if that's okay. Uh, Scott, so you asked about what's our success rate in percentage. 
Uh, it's, you know, it's very hard to say because you, look, you looked at the AFRX where we have about 66 or 70 percent, uh, maybe even higher than that for the phase two. Uh, so we have opportunities where, where we have a very high success rates and we have opportunities where we have lower success rates. Uh, but that's the way that it goes with the, uh, with, with the, with the government. Um, for the NSF, for example, the success, success rates at the, at the bigger population, the, the, the world, the bigger world, we're talking about 15% success rates for companies who are invited to submit a full application. We're sitting at a li about 25% or, or so success rates for this opportunity. For, for Army SBIR, Navy SBIR, there is, they don't really publish the topic, the, the success rates, but we're, as far as we know, we're, they're sitting at around 10 or 15% success rates. We're sitting at a little bit higher than that. It's it's very it's very um, uh, it's 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 it's, it's a lot, there's a, a great difference between the opportunities for the uh, for the BAAs usually the success rates for per per one submission per one application is in the in the single digit digit world uh, that's why we have the multiple submission process so it varies between companies it varies between fields it varies between opportunities there's no right answer here. So I'm sorry, but I can't give you a, a, a one. Uh, I can tell I can tell you it's seventy percent if we're only talking about Afrox. I can tell you five percent if we're talking about the uh, the army's a, the army's BAA and stuff like that. So it varies greatly. Um, regarding Morgan's question, uh, question uh, no life sciences, mesh, HW enhancement. Um, no, at Eagle Point we're not working with life sciences. Uh, we have Eagle Point. We have uh, FreeMind for that, and you're more than welcome to contact them. Uh, they're the best in the world in life sciences, so they will be the ones to contact about that. Yes, and we're definitely not biased. We're 100% objective on that. Uh, um, free mind, free mind group. I, I typed, um, I typed, in, I typed in their name as a response. Uh, free mind consultants or group in one in one uh, in one world. Uh, ask ask it. I, Google it and you'll find it. Uh, yeah. Company size limit for SBIR. Sorry, you for, for for taking over. Um, you can go for the for SBA.gov and see the every, the requirements and the changes because for small it, it varies between being um, um, women owned and hub zone and socially disadvantaged. Basically, 500, 500 people is small business. Uh, if I remember correctly, less than thirty five million dollars in revenues, I think. And um, there are other requirements for the, uh, for the ownership of the company. Uh, you, you need to be less than 50% owned by uh, VCs and hedge funds in order to be considered as um, uh, a small, co small, small company, small business for the SBAs. Uh, um, and regulations or requirements, as well as other, other requirements um, that, for example, the company needs to be owned and managed and operating in the United States in order to be considered as a small business uh, for the SBIR and STTR opportunities. So generally 500 people and less is a small business. That's the short answer and the big and the longer answer it could be found in sba.gov. Okay, uh, um, Iran, thank you so much folks. Thank you again for any other questions. You will see my email here. Uh, um, Iran, the Grand Grandmaster, the Sensei of Grants, uh, uh, um, the, the Lord of Submissions, thank you uh, very much and uh, wishing everybody a great day. And feel free to reach out personally and uh, let's discuss uh, timelines and if federal funding is a fit for you and to work with us. Iran, thank you again. Goodbye. Thank you, Bye-bye.